Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this year bibliographic bonus video. The past few weeks I've been reading Tom Holland's translation of Herodotus's The Histories, about the rise of the Persian Empire, the Greco-Persian Wars, and much, much more. Since this is partially a history channel, I thought it would be neat to talk about it for a bit, since Herodotus is the father of history and all that. So besides a basic review and opinion, don't really expect much from this video, I'll go a little more into the book itself, but I wouldn't even call it a proper review. I'm also recording in a slightly different position, so I may sound better or worse, I'm not sure, I'm just testing things right now. But I will talk some about the book. My copy is the 2015 translation by Tom Holland from Penguin. It is soft cover, but I do not believe the hardcover is very different. I will, though, praise the cover art. Some people would find the brightly contrasting Greek ceramic style tacky with the blacks and oranges, but I find it rather fitting, eye-catching for such a book. There are plenty of other translations, but I believe this one is the most recent and the most modern. If you're interested, there are older translations online, both freely available and easily accessible, by George Rawlinson and C.J. McCauley. Uh, you can find them as PDFs or just normal text documents on some websites. But I would recommend Holland's translation. I do not speak Greek, so I could only go with the translation, a solution that has its own inherent issues. But Holland is an accredited scholar, and his translation of Herodotus's prose flows easy. Besides some factors inherent in the original text, long lists of names and references, it was a breeze to read. The work is very well annotated with footnotes, and Holland's footnotes are very helpful and he makes use of his dry British wit in them, bringing a bit of levity to what can feel like a grand journey. Luckily, this doesn't taint the text with any uh, humor or anything like that, so it remains pure, separated into footnotes and main text. And it is a text. The Penguin softcover numbers 880 pages, which at Barnes & Noble fetches a price of $23 American. Only about 740 of those pages are introduction and text. The rest are maps of the Mediterranean as Herodotus would have known it. Very high quality and helpful, I may add. The rest are footnotes and glossary. So you're looking at about 140 extra pages, meaning the histories is a commitment to read. Is it worth it? The histories is not easy to approach. Even as an experienced reader of Greek history, it can feel like a hurdle. More to do with exhaustion from the sheer length of the text than anything inherent in it. I know it's self-defeating to have to research before reading a history, but the histories has not aged well. The audience was the contemporary Greek world, which we are 2,500 years removed from. But before you pick it up, you should know what it is about. And that is as hard to explain as reading it. Herodotus' style is rambling and schizophrenic, a medley of sources and anecdotes. The introduction compares Herodotus to reading a series of Wikipedia hyperlinks, and it is very, very apt. Unlike with Thucydides, whose history is very laser-focused, Herodotus rambles all over the place. That is not to say it's a bad thing, but it is very dense. Very, very dense. Herodotus even acknowledges this. Really, beyond the Greco-Persian Wars, the histories is Herodotus' attempt to detail the entire known world, which, in his time, he was limited in doing. Really, Herodotus covers the Mediterranean, Northern Africa, Eastern Europe, some of Central Asia, the Middle East, and vaguely touches on India. Living in 400 BC, Herodotus is not going to have solid knowledge on these places, but a lot of the misconceptions Herodotus attests and others claim to him are part of the book's charm, from the odd culture of the horse-riding Scythians to rats who supposedly find gold in India. Everything is told very thoroughly with only a tint of Greek bias in it. But on Greece is where Herodotus really shines. The Histories is obviously a founding document of the field of history because of Herodotus' abilities. The major plot of the book is the rise of the Persians, first against the Median Empire, then the rest of the Middle East, until the conflict with Greece. And, because the histories was a recent record, it puts the reader in the midst of this era. Herodotus moves beyond history to the wider fields of culture, government, and warfare with his own ideas and critiques, often swinging from mundane to outrageous, from a man being rescued by dolphins to Persian diplomats being thrown into a well, even political conspiracy to the last stand of the 300 Spartans. When you approach the histories, you do not expect how open Herodotus really is in it. Everyone takes their bumps. Herodotus criticizes what he sees. And this opinion is not bad in the book. The history should never be called an objective history. It is fair, largely in its criticisms. Mainly in how Herodotus calls out the pettiness of the Greek city-states, their inability to work together, and the backbiting of politicians. But that's an opinion about 2,000 years removed, so we don't really have the major context of the time. That is where the issues arise. Edward Gibbons said Herodotus writes sometimes for children and sometimes for philosophers, which is very true. 
What each section focuses on is a gamble. Because Herodotus relies often on anecdotes told to him or his own experiences, sections can often feel like a patchwork. Compounded with this is the list of names and locations Herodotus often evokes. He expects familiarity from his audience, which the modern world lacks because the world is over 2,000 years lost from that time. You're going to get some things you don't expect or even know about. Luckily, the footnotes, maps, and glossary alleviate that in this edition, but I have no idea how bad it would be for someone with no prior exposure approaching this. You can move from a rather sluggish section in one part of Herodotus describing mummification to the end of the book about him describing the last stand of the 300 Spartans. If you want to get to the really good stuff, you're going to have to work for it. It helps that the book is solid. Nothing overstays its welcome. Herodotus often lingers, but he talks about things in detail. When discussing the Scythians, for example, he talks about their lifestyle, culture, religion, and government. It's thorough. The only section that drags on is the second book slash chapter on Egypt, which many believe Herodotus started as a separate work, but inserted it into this work. So you can easily skip it. Despite being largely unrelated, it is still enjoyable. Now, if you want to approach the histories, how should you do it? I know it sounds counterproductive, but prepare. If you're looking for ancient Greek history, this is it. But it is not a good introduction. The history here is interesting, especially with Herodotus's tangents, but it is dense. The Penguin Edition's footnotes help with this, with quick explanations, but you need familiarity or you're going to be lost. Should you read the histories? Eh, it's a hard call. If you're committed to history, you are pretty much obligated to. By sheer page count, it is a commitment. A rewarding one, but it is not light reading. With familiarity, I'd say the Penguin Edition is the most approachable. I would recommend it if only for the maps, which are excellent quality and useful outside the book. There are public, legally free PDFs of older translations online, can't attest for their quality, but they are available and very easy to find. If you're looking for a simpler Greek history introduction, I would suggest HDF Kitto's The Greeks, which I have read. It is older, but comprehensive and an easy read. Beyond history, it also has a wider overview of ancient Greece. Good preparation if you're looking to read the histories at some point. And if you have absolutely no exposure to the Greeks, there is the Evergood Mythology by Edith Hamilton, which is a universal introduction. Pretty much the simplest and most comprehensive text you can find on the subject of Greek mythology and some side notes on early Greek culture. As someone who's been on a Greek tangent, I enjoyed the histories. Though I'm also someone who can enjoy the driest accounts of history. But the histories surprised me. It was more compelling than I expected. Holland's translated prose was enjoyable and the subject matter even more so. Give it a swing once you feel ready and you'll probably enjoy it. Or maybe you'll have to write your own history. Alright, I hope that wasn't too awful. Not really a review, but I wanted to get my thoughts out there on the book. I hope I at least got across everything I wanted to. Precise overview, text, and some opinions. These uh, book videos won't come out too often, just one-offs with update videos to make up for the light content, or when I really have an opinion. Just talk about stuff I've read or have been reading. It is as content at least, but these won't flood the channel, so don't worry. And I uh, hope that was at least vaguely informative or enjoyable. Have a good one.